time they can fall asleep. So this is in my heart and soul. And one of the great things I know is that story is what transforms us. It's the autoimmune reaction that allows us to say, maybe if we begin to tell the story of who and what we are that we like better, that we begin to understand that possibly, just possibly, it's what we bring to the table rather than what we react against that helps us understand ourselves. And that's why I started thinking about the idea and the knowledge of believing. And I started to think about the people in my life that believed in me. But they didn't believe in something about me, they believed in something in me. And they began to say, I think something is remarkable in you. And I was very fortunate because I had parents that were imaginative and creative. They said, live an examined life. Don't ask other people what they believe, but take an adventure together. See where you go in relationship. And maybe a conversation is much more interesting than a statement. You see, I have good stock. I have parents that were curious. I realize that's the greatest gift as parents we can give to our children, is be curious in front of them, ask questions, admit you don't know, and maybe we have something to discover together. Because the great thing about moving beyond belief, and this came really from my life as an actor professionally, was I realized that my curiosity was never about what should I believe, what team should I join, who should I be at the end of the day, but really, how can I use my curiosity as a way of entering into the question of what does it mean to be human? And what we find in acting is that you don't go into a role saying, I know how to play this role, I know who this person is. But you enter the role with innocence. You begin to, with your curiosity, ask, what may I learn from you? And it's a type of alchemical crucible that begins to grow within you and grow with your curiosity until finally something within you begins to embody not that which is just yourself, but really is the truth of another person being able to express itself as you, through you. I liken it like Hamlet. If you watch a hundred actors play Hamlet, they're all Hamlet, and yet they're all unique. And each performance will allow us to see something a little bit deeper in Hamlet himself. But we realize the character is greater than the sum of its parts. And that's the great curiosity that I believe allows us to enter into relationship. And I wanted to talk about the story of love in terms of believing in one another. Because my wife, Carla, and my daughters, who are here by proxy, in other words, they're here in spirit. Um, oh, there they are, they're back there as well. Because I really feel this sense of in community and family, that as we begin to put our story together, and this is what I learned from love, is that when we believe in one another, we stop believing in ourselves alone and begin to understand, like theater, that this is an ensemble work. And that if we understand this, we begin to trust and we begin to gather, not what reinforces what we know, but actually allows us to finally dive into what we don't know and say, what may I learn from you? And that became community for me. And that's why I feel now that the curiosity of my life, it drove me back to, I remembered boyhood, and I remembered the Boy Scouts, and I remembered Will Rogers, and reading a quote of Will Rogers, he said, I never met a man I didn't like. And I thought, God, I don't know whether he believes that, but what a wonderful bit of optimism to live by. And that's what brings me now full circle as a human being to this sense of almost that we live in this magical library together. And we've forgotten that actually the question of curiosity of who are we then wasn't simply to find a belief or find a book in the library, but to finally hold our belief, our spine, our unique character, the play of life, and to say, I can hold this, and I can, and you can hold this, and between this and this is not something we know, but dynamic possibility. And we amplify, we energize one another, and we begin to hold that sense of maybe together we're the living library. Maybe we've reached a point in our lives where as storytellers, we begin to say, it's always dark. The world is always falling away. It's always difficult. But when you look at it as theater, you say, it's really not about the villains and the bad guys. They're fun to play as well. It's actually about the catalyst and looking at our lives and saying, well, I like this story better. And I think that's what family gives you. I think that's what love gives you. I think that's what community gives you. That's what Malibu gave me. It gave me a sense of, if we begin to honor the sacredness 
of what we've been given. If we realize we have time to get together on this crazy world and talk about storytelling, then we're the storytellers who have been called to tell the story. Because when you look at history, when you go into the living library, what it means to be human, you realize it wasn't about getting it right. It was about getting it beautiful. Finally saying, regardless of the truth that I'm going to die, that we're all going to die in the meantime. What if we tell a story we like better? What if we tell a story that says, you know what, like my life, I'm the outcome of all of this. We're the outcome of what it means to be human. And therefore, it's not reacting against who's right and who's wrong. In the same way that you don't do this when you perform music together. You say, I like your riff. I'm going to lean into that music with you. And together, we're going to orchestrate a story of being human that really becomes symphonic, becomes overwhelmingly optimistic, and at the end of the day, allows us to say, I like this story better. And that's when we move beyond belief into embodiment. We get out of the audience and we stand together on stage and say, let's make it more interesting simply because we can.